Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are going back to a goaltender simulation today and I will be simulating the career of a high franchise stand-up netminder. Does player type actually make a difference? I have no idea, but I went through the entire NHL, all, let me do the quick math here, 64 goalies on the starting lineups and they were all hybrid. Not one single butterfly, not one single stand-up. It's honestly kind of a shock that these types are even in the game, but they're there. I believe I've only done one other goaltender simulation this year, and this one's probably not that much different, but I just wanted to try the stand-up type because, like I said, there is not a single stand-up goalie in the NHL. So without further ado, let's jump in and see how this goaltender does throughout their entire career. We already get to see how unimportant goalies are as Brick Wall is supposed to go fourth and that pick will fall to the Anaheim Ducks who originally had the third pick but ended up getting moved up. So Bedard goes first, Carlson second, Benson third and then we finally get to see Brick Wall go fourth to the Ducks as he was projected at the beginning of the year. Now at 81 overall, Brick will be starting in the NHL. No AHL time will be spent on this high franchise netminder. They already have Patch Ready and Tarasenko as well. So some interesting maneuvers being made and Gibson will be the veteran goalie that Brick will be looking up to. So that is huge. Three years is the entry level contract at 910K. The team finishes second in the Pacific division. Wall gets a decent amount of starts this year. Not a lot, but Definitely some experience in there and had to go in for relief in the playoffs once as well. The Ducks got rinsed by the Sharks in round one, taking six games. I actually haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to be showing the retired goaltenders for this simulation as well. So we could see where all the other goalies ended up finishing. Brickwell's already up to an 87 overall will be the starter, I guess. The team finishes third in the Pacific this year. It split fairly evenly, but Brick did get more starts. And he also had all of the playoff starts, but first round exit would be the fate of the Anaheim Ducks yet again here. And once more it would be to the San Jose Sharks. Craig Anderson, the legend, retires with 358 wins. Troy Terry, Tarasenko, and Zegris make up the first line for the Ducks. Fowler and Drysdale will be the top defensive pair. And Brick Wall at 89 overall now, still going to be the starter this season. The team finishes third in the entire league. We get 68 games ahead of Brick and 14 playoff showings. So that is a big improvement from the last two years, but still only a second round appearance. Bobrovsky retires this season just shy of 400 wins. Tara Sank show is now gone and Hartman will be filling in that spot on the first line. Also, no more Cam Fowler. But we do have a 94 overall Brick Wall who signs a six-year $10 million ticket. Not bad. The team finishes first in their division with 98 points. The starts are split almost right in half this season, which is kind of weird. But anyway, 11 playoff games for Brick. Second round exit yet again. And this time it will be two straight losses to the Edmonton Oilers. Johnny Quick, see you later. Jeff Skinner will be playing with Zegris and Terry this season. Gibson is no more, so it is officially Wall's team. And they finished fifth in the entire league with 103 points. A very successful season. 71 games at a brick and 41 wins with a 9-10 save percentage. 14 playoff games for this season would have them eliminated in the second round again. So they kind of have a curse going on right now. But anyway, Flower, you legend. Skinner remains on the first line this year. So does Zegris and Troy Terry. The team finishes fifth in their division this time, missing out on the playoffs. Unfortunately, it was not a back-to-back fifth-placed league finish. The Buffalo Sabres win the Stanley Cup, and Peter Mrazek is at the top this year with 168 wins. Now we've got Yuri filling that spot on the first line left wing. Drysdale and Pavel up on the first defensive pair. And 92 overall, Brick Wall, the starting goaltender for the team that finishes second in the league. 111 points, 44 wins from Brick, 908 save percentage, and a 281 GAA. He also had 22 playoff games under his belt this year, meaning they finally got past the second round. And yes, they sure did. They broke the curse and won the cup. How about that? Just let me quickly add that to the list of things you love to see. JT Miller will be playing with Zegris and Terry this season. We got Hoffer as the backup. The team wins a President's Trophy straight off of winning a Stanley Cup. 
They're seeing a whole lot of success right now. 41 wins on the year for Mr. Wall, but a first round exit. That's the President's Trophy curse. Ladies and gentlemen, you shouldn't have done that. Should have thrown at the end of the year and not taken that trophy. 454 wins for Hellebuck, by the way. That's unreal. Nikolai Ehlers now will be up on that first line. They seem to be changing every single year. And they win back-to-back -back President's Trophies. 111 points would do it this time. 40 wins for Brick. And 12 playoff appearances with a 927 save percentage. So he had his guy. He also gets the Jennings. And a second round exit in six games would be handed out to the Ducks by the Edmonton Oilers. I suppose a Stanley Cup followed by two President's Trophy winning seasons wasn't good enough. So hit him with the deuces and headed over to Montreal. And he's going to be the starting goalie there, obviously. A 93 overall with all those abilities signs. A six-year $11.5 million contract. The team does make the playoffs in Wall's first season, finishing fifth in the Atlantic. Not the best record and not the best save percentage, to be honest with you. But they got it done. They did not get it done in the playoffs. A first-round exit would come at the hands of the New Jersey Devils, taking just six games. And Vazzy surpassed 500 wins. You see what I see. Not going to ignore him either. Two wonderful careers. Miko looks like a pretty solid backup for Brick. The team overall just looks good. Can't lie. They finished third in the Atlantic Division. A sub 900 save percentage for Brick this year though, which is a little bit worrisome. He does get 19 playoff appearances, however, which brought them all the way to the conference finals where the New York Rangers, speaking of, Georgiev, hello, dusted them in six games. Caulfield, Caswell, and Boss on the first line. Wall down to 92 overall. He seemed to be fluctuating a lot, which is kind of strange. The team just bails out of the President's Trophy. So clearly Wall has learned. That's great. Too bad it didn't help them in the playoffs as they still had a first round exit. But Wall would take home the Vezina this year. Massive. And it was the New Jersey Devils to once again put out the Montreal Canadiens. Samsonov, just shy of 330 wins. Great career for him as well. Here are your 2020, I don't even know what year we're in, Montreal Canadiens. And we have Wall backed up by Marshall. The team once again finishes second in the entire league. So lots of seasonal success. Playoffs have been a bit shaky though. 37 wins for Brick. Five playoff appearances. So they got dusted in round one again. The Jennings Trophy would be headed to Wall's closet. So you love to see that. But the Penguins made light work of Montreal in just the first round. boy, Jakey O. Cheeky little 78 overall. 38 year old first line center. Bold strategy. Let's see if it pays off here. It does. The team finishes second in the entire league. Yet again, that is three straight seasons where they did not get the President's Trophy. But they were right there. And that is three straight seasons with a miserable playoff run. The Jennings would be going to wall. So still getting some individual trophies, but the Sens would delete the Habs in round one. Gustafsson up at the top with 320. It's really good. Caswell, Stenberg, and Caulfield will be the first line for the Montreal Canadiens heading into this season. Clearly, Steny took over for the 78 overall, but no luck. The team finishes seventh in the Atlantic. 24 wins for Brick. Not a good year whatsoever. The Stanley Cup goes to San Jose and Katahat. Is up at the top, but there's a lot of goalies very close in that retirement class. So enough of that. It's time to head over to the Broad Street Bullies. Once again, and honestly, I gotta say, I love that the players hop around like this now. They never used to. Two years, 10.5. Not a long contract, but he's getting paid. It's not a great first season with the Broad Street Bullies. Finishing 7th in the Metropolitan Division and a 900 save percentage flat, which is not all that impressive. The Golden Knights take the Stanley Cup and Spencer Knight goes up to 574 wins? That's unreal. Zegris and Brick are reunited, but it will be on the Flyers. Now down to 89 overall Brick Wall and the Broad Street Bullies have another stinker of a year. Missing out on the playoffs twice in a row. New Jersey gets the Stanley Cup this season, and Levi is at the top of the goalie retirement class. So again, two years, no playoffs. He decides to move over to Buffalo, and he's now down to 87 overall. Signs a one-year deal at $9.75 million. The team finishes third in the entire league, which for me was kind of surprising because they didn't look that good, but clearly they made it work. 
a 917 save percentage in 27 playoff games. Wall gets the Vesna, gets the Jennings, and the Buffalo Sabres don't win the Stanley Cup. They lost in seven to the Calgary Flames. Talk about an absolute heartbreak. But what a year it was with the Buffalo Sabres. Now, again, the Stanley Cup Finals wasn't enough. It's time to move to New Jersey, and I'm here for it. I, like I said, love that these players hop around now. They are suitcases. Absolutely on board with that. One year, $10.6 million. The team finishes third in the league. 106 points would put them there. We get 43 wins from the wall with a 907 save percentage. Only 11 playoff games, though. So not the best playoff run. They did get past round one, but the Jerks delete them in round two, taking six games. Jesper Wallstedt got pretty close to 500 wins. So what a career that he had as well. I don't even know what to say anymore. Florida, <laughs> trying out another team. Here we go. They are loaded with abilities, by the way. 83 overall. It's also worth pointing out that Brick just doesn't retire. I've never seen someone play for this long. I don't know if it's because he's a goalie or what it was, but the other players that I've been doing retired, you know, not super late. They're like 37, I would say at most, 38 sometimes. This guy just does not give up. He is the Yager of goaltending. Anyway, um, I didn't mention last season, but they didn't do that good. So hopefully they do better this season, even though Brick is now an 81 overall. They don't. Seventh in the Atlantic Division, 80 points. What are you doing? Let's just call it quits. You're ruining your legacy at this point. I mean, he is getting more wins, to be fair. A sub-900 save percentage. And I was shocked. Every time I went to the retirement list and he wasn't there, like, what's going on? Playing in the AHL now signs a one-year 2.1 million dollar contract with the Boston, or I guess Providence Bruins. And still no! I don't know what to tell you with this guy. He played a whole year in the AHL. And he's like, yeah, let's go. I run it back. Joins the Carolina Hurricanes, the Jerks. And he's 77 overall. Still has abilities though, so got that going for him. One year, 900k. And it pays off as the Jerks finish 6th in the entire league with 100 points. A 900 save percentage out of Wall. I mean, didn't play a whole lot of games. But anyway, they would be bested in round 1 by the Toronto Maple Leafs taking 7 games. And he gets all the way up to 709 wins. A career 908 save percentage, which is pretty good. And his most winning season was 45 dubs. I might put him in the Hall of Fame. I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up. Hopefully I didn't miss anything here, but holy, this guy played for some teams. We got Anaheim, Montreal, the Flyers, the Sabres, the Devils, Panthers, Providence, which I don't normally include AHL teams, but whatever, just to add to the list, and also the Jerks. I, for some reason, feel like he won more than two President's Trophies, but my brain is also telling me that he got the two back-to-back -back and then never won it again. Came second a bunch of times, but anyway... One Stanley Cup, two President's Trophies, four Jennings, and two Vesnas. On top of that, he signed 23 years worth of contracts at $186.615 million and would surpass Martin Brodeur as the most winning goalie of all time. The most winningest? Most winning? I, whatever. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have other suggestions for career simulations drafts anything like that be sure to leave it down below did you expect this goalie to do this good or not i'm also curious to hear about that um i think like 950 percent of you watching this aren't subscribed so if you could that'd be fire i'll see you soon